How we doing, everyone? Today is Thursday, June the 6th, 2024. I'm just going to do a um, presentation on how you can uh, use your retirement account and investment funds. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can maximize the returns and uh, get involved in real estate. I'm going to show two different ways by the end of the presentation. So uh, you know, if you do have a retirement account, uh, maybe you've been working somewhere for some time and built up, you know, a decent amount of money in your retirement account and been thinking about possibly investing in real estate or investing in some other opportunities, uh, this presentation is going to show you a way that you can do that. Uh, also, if you just have some investment capital, maybe you've made some money in the stock market, um, you know, over these last couple of years. And you're thinking about possibly uh, diversifying, looking for some some other opportunities. Uh, we're going to discuss a couple of ways that you can do that. So with that being said, let me share my screen. So the title of the presentation is Growing Your Retirement Account or Investment Capital. Um, you know, here's my contact information here on the screen. So if you need to reach out to me, uh, either uh, give me a call or a text message, or you can email me uh, maybe with any questions you might have based on the presentation, or if you'd like to, you know, talk about what we talked about here, you can give me a call. So a little bit about me, I uh, went to Rutgers University in New Brunswick, graduated in 2000. I've uh, been a licensed realtor for over 20 years, uh, so been in and around uh, real estate for some time. Um, the real reason, one of the primary reasons that I'm doing this is because of my um, history in real estate. I was around during the 2008-2009 uh, crash, and at that particular time, uh, a lot of people uh, should have been looking to take advantage of that particular market and using, you know, retirement funds or any type of investment capital at that time to increase their wealth. Um, so that's one of the biggest reasons why I am doing this um, is because of my, um, you know, history in real estate and seeing up and down markets over the years. Um, have listed and sold REO and short sale properties for Tribeca Lending, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Chase Bank. Um, you know, I've done rental deals, uh, sold uh, enlisted um, traditional, um, you know, sales uh, for for home sellers and, and and work with a lot of home buyers as well over that twenty years. Uh, also, I was a um, real estate development uh, field uh, uh, construction supervisor. Um, so you know, we had a site where they were doing a new construction. So I worked on that, and, and you know, have some uh, knowledge about working on new construction. Also, I've been in the insurance. Uh, industry as well. Uh, for about three or four years, I was with uh, State Farm Insurance in uh, in Newark, the um, Zanetta Glover Agency. So, uh, you know, have some experience here on all phases of real estate, you know, and some in insurance. Um, what will be covered in this presentation? Uh, how to can take control of your investment capital or retirement account uh, more safely and securely to get higher rates of return. I'm not sure if a, a lot of people know about this information or not, but want to at least put put plant the seed in people's mind about ways that they can, um, you know, take more control of their money and to see that it gets a higher rates uh, of return. Uh, a lot of people have been concerned about inflation. Um, if you are saving money right now, uh, putting in a savings account, it is actually losing money when it comes to the inflation rate. Um, so we just want to make sure that, and if you are investing in it, um, what is your, you know, what are your returns like on a yearly basis? Do you look at um, what you're getting on a yearly basis? And is that staying equal to or beating inflation? Also, we'll talk about two real estate straight, excuse me, real estate strategies you can use uh, to achieve this. So are you in control of your 401k or other retirement account? Uh, what safeguards are in place for the protection of your investment funds? A lot of times people have uh, company-sponsored accounts. 
like I said, somebody may been may have been working um, for a company for you know ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, um, however long. And when you usually sign up, you sign up for some type of uh, company match account, and this is uh, you know controlled by a third party. So, do you uh, have any safeguards if they're if they make bad investments? Uh, a lot of times they usually have three tiers, whether they can be conservative, moderate, or risky investments. But do you have any, um, you know, protection against that? Do you even know what your money is being invested in? That's a big thing. Do you know the companies that are, are, are that they are being invested in? Have you um, looked at a statement and saw the different uh, funds that your money is in and how those funds are performing? Uh, most people you know, kind of look at their statement whenever they get it. And as long as they kind of see the money increasing, uh, that's a good thing. But how much is it really increasing? How much unknown risk are you taking with your 401k uh, with these particular companies and, and what they are putting, uh, what they're investing in? Has the, has the person or company that invests your money ever asked you or spoken to you about what investments are good or bad at any given time? Um, you know, I had a 401k at one particular time with the company, and I don't ever remember talking to anyone <laughs> at the company that was, um, you know, sponsoring or handling uh, the the account about what it is that you want to invest in. Uh, I think initially we sat down and, you know, we said well, we we're going to put it in this particular fund. But what you start out with maybe in your first year or two of working somewhere uh, maybe you start out with something that's a little bit more less risky, but, you know, maybe you want to move it over into something that's more risky or higher risk so you'll get higher returns. But, you know, are you really communicating that with the person or the company that is handling your account? Has your account grown at or above the annual rate of return? I mean, excuse me, has your account grown at or above the annual rate of return on a yearly basis? You know, what, what are the... What are they looking for? Did they tell you, you know, we can at least guarantee a 4%, 5%, uh, 3% per year? Um, or maybe some people have, you know, said that, you know, we can do about a 7, 8% return on your money per year. But have you had those discussions? Are they telling you that? These are key things when you are, um, you know, having someone uh, essentially uh, control your money and put your money into different investments. Is there a way to take more control of your 401k? And the answer is yes. Uh, it's with a self-directed IRA. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this with the acronym SDIRA. Uh, that stands for self-directed IRA, which is an IRA in which the IRA owner directs all investments in the account. Excuse me. The only difference between... What you have currently is that the self-directed IRA has a broader spectrum of investments to choose from. So it works very similar to, you know, a company sponsored type of account that you may have, but instead of it only going into certain funds that are invested in the stock market, you have uh, more things that you can invest in. You could be someone that, you know, has certain interests, knows, knows, um, about certain aspects of, uh, you know, business or other opportunities out there, you may have some knowledge and, and be able to to know what is a good investment or something you want to put your money in, but you can't necessarily do it with it in this 401k, this company sponsored 401k account, because it's only going into the stock market. With the self-directed IRA, uh, you can look at other opportunities and we'll kind of go through some of those other opportunities. So it gives you a broader spectrum of things to invest in, to take advantage of. You know, at certain times uh, in the economic cycle, uh, certain opportunities are over here. And then, and then at other times, there are certain opportunities that are someplace else. So you always want to make sure that, you know, you have the flexibility to be able to take advantage of some of those, um, those opportunities. You know, we've come through a really good cycle uh, with the stock market. So maybe that's where you wanted your money for that particular time. But there are instances um, <clears throat> where uh, maybe you want to 
kind of take the money out of the stock market because it's not a, it's it's not uh, performing like it once was and put it in another opportunity that you know about. And with the self-directed IRA, you have that flexibility. Why would you want to use a self-directed IRA? Self -directed IRA? Because you can pick and choose in what you want to invest in. You can invest in more opportunities in addition to the stock market. So even if you do have the self-directed IRA and you know you have some discussions with people and you see an opportunity, like now everybody has been talking about NVIDIA. Um, had you, you know, had the opportunity to invest in NVIDIA when it was about a hundred dollars a share. And now, right now, it's, you know, probably the close of today, it's probably around twelve or $1,300. You would have been able to do that had you had a self-directed IRA. Um, so, you know, and again, stocks and, and, and different things like that may be something that you're more familiar with. And when you have these conversations with other people and they tell you about, you know, you may want to look at this company or look at this opportunity, you have the ability through a self-directed IRA to still invest in the stock market, but you have, you have the ability to do some other things as well. Uh, you can diversify your portfolio. That's what you want to do too. A lot of people are 100% invested in the stock market. A lot of people that work and have jobs and things like that don't really um, look to diversify their portfolio. They want to keep their money in there, hoping that in 25, 30 years when they're ready to retire, that it has grown and it has gotten to a point where they can retire safely. I think those days are coming to an end, if not have ended already. Um, so we really need to look at the opportunities to diversify your portfolio, again, to take advantage of where the opportunities are. <clears throat> so the types of self-directed IRAs. Um, so these are the different types of plans that you can have. You have the personal uh, plans, which are the traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. Again, you can have these accounts. You may have these accounts set up now through through a company sponsored or some type of um, uh, some type of setup where you have these uh, already uh, set up. But you can also have them in a the self directed where you can take or have more control over what you invest in. So you can do a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA through a self directed uh, company. Uh, you have self employed plans if you're somebody that you know has your own business and, you know, has a retirement account, uh, you can set it up through this as well as, as a self-employed person with this SEP IRA, the simple IRA and the solo 401k. Now, I don't want to get into the specifics of any of these accounts. If you want to get into specifics, we definitely can get you over to a professional that can look at your situation and identify which of these accounts <clears throat> makes the most sense for you. Uh, and then you also have specialty plans. And this is where um, I really think that people could take advantage of um, these, these types of plans. Um, the health savings account, obviously that's for anything health related, doctor's appointments, medicine, things of that nature. You can have a self-directed IRA that bills this account for you. Um, so, you know, so you don't have to worry about co-pays and, and, and things of that nature. And then also you have this Coverdell education. So if you have an account somewhere and you want to establish this Coverdell account, which is for education for children, either children, grandchildren, uh, nieces, nephews, things of that nature, uh, you can do that as well. You can take, uh, you can transfer some of the dollars that you have uh, into an account that'll be for someone who is obviously younger and maybe by the time they're just 17, 18 years old and ready to go on to college or to some other type of school um, or some other, some other type of education program, you can build this, um, this, this uh, account up for that particular time. And then, you know, if, if, and when you get to that point and the person, uh, the child doesn't want to, you know, further their education, you know, you can, you know, roll these accounts over and do some other things with them at that particular time. But, I think that a really important thing um, going into the future, you know, are these health savings plans? Do you have enough money in case you have to go to a doctor? You know, something happens to you when you get older. If you take the time now to use these accounts uh, to to grow them and to, um, you know, put some money in it for, you know, later on in your in your elderly years, uh, I think that that'll be a game changer for a lot of people. And then also, like I said, for the education 
um, education costs are going up. Um, you know, what it costs to go to college is very expensive. And so if you can grow this to at least a certain amount where it can offset uh, some of that, um, some of that cost, that'll be great. Uh, what can you invest in? Like we talked about uh, earlier. So these are the things that you can invest in. You can invest in real estate, single family homes, foreclosures, commercial properties, condominiums, uh, options, any type of lease option on real estate or unimproved land and tax liens. So you have a lot of different things within real estate um, that you can take advantage of, take advantage of some of these opportunities. Uh, a big thing um, coming up right now, I think are tax liens. Uh, a lot of people's taxes have been adjusted. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, a lot of uh, people are, their tax bills are going up and really uh, causing an issue in some of the single family and multifamily uh, spaces. Uh, obviously commercial. Uh, I don't know, you know, if you've been following this, but here's a really big issue uh, in commercial with commercial property, especially multifamily um, types of properties. Um, so there's opportunities there. Uh, there's opportunities with foreclosures and, and, and all of these different, um, you know, categories of real estate. There are opportunities out there that you can take advantage of. And then a lot of people don't do it because they feel as though, you know, again, my money is in this 401k account, this company sponsored, you know, I can't get to it. I can't move it. I can't touch it um, to be able to take advantage of some of these opportunities. But with this self-directed IRA, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can invest in businesses, private entities. Um, you know, you may be where you live. Uh, someone had a business uh, prior to COVID and, you know, obviously COVID uh, damaged a lot of businesses and caused people to shut down. Uh, you can invest in other people's businesses. Maybe there is a business in your local neighborhood that's looking to grow, uh, looking to expand. Potentially, you can use money in your self-directed IRA to invest in that. And then whatever type of agreement you work out with that business owner, um, you want to make sure that, you know, obviously it's profitable and your money, uh, you can, you know, how you get the return on your investment, but you can invest in those things. Again, with traditional types of IRAs um, that, that most people have, you can invest in these opportunities. Um, so you may hear about something that's going on when it comes to a business that needs some capital to kind of get to the next level and continue to grow, but you can't take advantage of it. But with this self-directed IRA, you can't. Promissory notes, uh, secured loans, unsecured loan, mortgages, uh, convertible notes, shared appreciation, net profit notes. So, um, you know, when it comes to the, a note, uh, most people, you know, who purchase a home, you have a note and a mortgage. Uh, you can uh, invest in that note. Um, the note, I mean, the, the mortgage is the security agreement for the note. The note is the IOU. It spells out like how many payments you have to make, what the payment is, the interest rate, uh, how many months you're going to have to make that payment for. Uh, so, it, you know, the note spells that out and you have the ability um, with your self-directed IRA to buy notes. So you essentially can become the bank. Um, just like you pay the bank each and every month because um, that note requires you to make a certain payment for the next 30 years or however long left you have on it. And whatever that payment is, it goes to the bank. You can purchase these. Um, some people don't think so because, you know, they're living in three, four hundred thousand dollar houses and they don't think that they have those opportunities. But there are a lot of opportunities out there in lower priced areas uh, across the country where not every uh, neighborhood is a three or $400,000 neighborhood. You have $100,000 neighborhoods. You have $50,000 neighborhoods where people have nice homes, three bedrooms, or, you know, one and a half baths, uh, nice residential neighborhoods that are a lot less and people, you know, can afford to invest in those particular areas and become the bank. So now you are this person's bank. This person, you purchase the note and then they start to pay you uh, each and every month. And then again, you look at what the interest rate is and how you're going to get a return on this, but you have uh, the ability to to purchase these. Uh, precious metals. Uh, you can do that if you're somebody that knows about precious metals, um, you know, gold, silver, things of that nature. Uh, you have the opportunity to use your funds again to uh, make these purchases. Maybe you feel like gold is going to increase over the next five to 10 years or you want to buy a certain portion of it and just make sure that you have it uh, in case, you know, something goes 
uh, awry with this monetary system that we have. A lot of people have been investing in precious metals now as a, you know, as protection. Uh, if anything uh, were to go wrong or change up in this uh, current economic um, system that we have right now, uh, cryptocurrency, um, you know, you can, you know, buy the Bitcoin, the Ethereums and different things like that through your self-directed IRA. So you don't have to strictly do real estate but again, we just want to make sure that people understand that there's a lot of different things out there that you may want to invest in and to, to be able to potentially diverse, diversify your portfolio. So the two ways that you can use a self-directed IRA, like I said in the beginning, is with private money lending when it comes to real estate. Now, these things are just primarily uh, for real estate, uh, as opposed to, to some of those other things that I named. Private money lending and real estate note investing that we talked about. Um, so pri what is private lending? Private lending, also known as peer-to-peer -peer lending, is when an individual organization loans money to a person or company outside of the traditional financial services industry. Someone or a group of individuals brings you a real estate deal that needs funding, and you agree to fund the deal based on a set of negotiated terms. So right now... <clears throat> Because of what is going on uh, in the banking system and with certain portions of real estate, private money is needed uh, in this space to take advantage of some of these situations, to help people out, uh, to be able to uh, help someone out as well as make a solid return on your money. And private lending is one of the ways that you can do that by having your money uh, put into a self-directed IRA and then lending it for certain opportunities. There are a lot of people out there right now that are going through financial difficulties. Um, again, like I talked about in the commercial space, really big issues out there. So to, to obviously invest in commercial is going to take a higher dollar amount, but there are uh, residential neighborhoods and areas um, that you can do some private lending on, people have projects going on, people are getting houses, they're fixing them up, looking to sell them. Uh, so you can get involved in things like that. You can fund certain transactions uh, with private lending and you can get a really, really solid return. Uh, and you can pick you know, the type of interest that you want uh, on these particular deals if you're gonna to, to fund someone's uh, transaction. There can be a lot of negotiation there and you can make sure that you're getting a solid return and you will be protected uh, when you do private lending uh, against the actual property. The property is your security because you can always get the property back to then be able to make sure that you recoup on your investment. So private lending is a really uh, great opportunity to, um, to, to, to use your self-directed IRA uh, to, to get those returns that you're looking for. And then what is a real estate note? A uh, real estate note is a promissory note that provides the financial details of the loan's repayment, such as the interest rate and method of payment, better known as the IOU. So I explained that a little bit more, a little bit uh, before. Uh, so you, again, you have the opportunity. Uh, there are companies out there that own uh, these these real estate notes, and they look to sell them. You have individual investors uh, who had a piece of property offered uh, what they call seller financing or terms to a buyer. So they became the buyer's bank and created a real estate note. And then now that investor, you know, would like to cash out of that particular note. And you have the ability with a self-directed IRA uh, to buy that in your self-directed IRA. And now the payments of that structure are going to come to you through your account. And then again, like I said, you will see um, your your account growing more safely and securely because it is backed by that piece of real estate. So if worst case scenario in these types of instances, if the person that you learn the money to stops paying for whatever reason, life happens, we know things happen all the time, you always have the property as recourse. You can get that property back and you can exit that property in a multiple and multiple strategies. We won't get into all of those strategies, but uh, you can do a bunch of uh, a bunch of things if you were to take back this particular property. So that's how you are, you know, safe and secure in this because you don't actually lose 
uh, your money, uh, you know, it may, you know, it, it, you know, you may have to adjust it a little bit where you you were looking for to to on your return to to make all the money back maybe in five years and then instead of now it being five years maybe it's seven years or something like that it just adjusts a little bit depending on the situation but you know that you can get this property back to make sure that you can recoup your initial investment and so why become a private lender you get higher rates of return on your money your money is secured by the property as we mentioned length of term is your choice uh, you can do um short term or long term so if you want to do something that's maybe 5 years you know as opposed to maybe 20 or 30 years uh, you can do that uh, you get regular passive income there's really nothing for you to do once you lend the money you know to have the terms there the you know that monthly payment just comes back to you or in your account in your self-directed IRA account each month. The only time you will have to possibly get involved is if, again, something happens with the person that is making the payment to you, but you have, you know, servicers and different things like that are, that are working on your behalf where you don't necessarily have to be uh, involved on a day-to-day -day basis. You would only have to get involved if something were to occur uh, down the line, and then you may have to get involved. And then also, as we talked about, you want to beat inflation. Uh, whatever you think inflation is, whatever number uh, you want to put inflation at, um, right now they're saying it, you know, technically they're saying that it's, you know, around three and a half, four percent. That could be true. If you use another number and let's say you think it's six or seven percent, you know, you can set your interest at eight percent, nine percent. And, you know, then you know that you're that you're beating uh, the inflation rate by you know, loaning this money or lending this this money out or or uh, providing, you know, some, some funding for somebody and be able to take advantage of that higher interest rate. And so why invest in real estate notes? Um, you have low risk and in, in high yield. The reason why we say that is because we always buy notes at a discount. So uh, let's just say this particular property um, was a $50,000 property. That's what it was worth. You're never going to buy the note at that $50,000 because you would be at 100% investment to value uh, ratio. You don't want to be that. We make sure that, you know, we build in some cushion there. So we're never going to put you or, or look for an opportunity where you're, you know, in the deal for more than, let's say, 75%. We usually like to be under that, but let's just say that's kind of like a maximum. So if there is any type of adjustment in a market conditions and things of that nature, and there's value and it loses value, you have some cushion there. Now, if, a, if, a, if something happens like 2008, 2009, I mean, that's not something that, you know, most people can predict um, where things drop 50, 60% in certain neighborhoods. That's an abnormality. Um, but again, in that scenario, even if that were to happen, we have other exit strategies um, that we can use to make sure that we can recoup the investment. We won't get into all of that right now. Um, so you, again, like I've been saying, you've been secured by real estate, always purchase at a discount. Uh, we, it beats inflation. You have the multiple exit strategies, passive income with no landlord responsibility. So you're not dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis when you're dealing with real estate notes. Uh, you purchase it, you kind of sit in and forget it until, you know, you need to be more involved. Um, at that particular time, if something happens with the, the person that's living in the property, um, then you would have to, you know, try to get involved. But until then, you don't, you know, it's nothing for you to do. You just collect uh, mailbox money is what they call it. Um, you can purchase in all states. Like I said, we can find uh, neighborhoods for you where it fits your type of budget, um, or what type of money that you have. And, you know, you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, like I said, there's neighborhoods where there's, you know, you can buy notes at 10,000, 20,000, um, you know, and there's different things that that you can structure within notes to take advantage of, of some of these opportunities that are out there and you don't need the 100, 125, uh, $200,000 just to, to invest. Um, and the investment amount vary and can be purchased uh, in the 401k, the, the HSA, uh, or all those other accounts that we talked about. So even if you want to take a certain portion of money and put it into a Coverdale account for your children, for your grandchildren, uh, you can do that and still take advantage of, of these particular, you know, opportunities. 
So that is the um, the end of the presentation. Um, again, I just wanted to kind of go through and let people know that there is uh, a way that you can, you know, leverage some of your retirement account or investment money, even if you have investment money um, that you're thinking about um, using, uh, you can put that into a self-directed IRA or you can use it um, to do any of the things that, you know, we just talked about investing in, you know, either private lending or, you know, purchasing uh, real estate notes. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, you know, please give me a call 973-475-8488, or you can uh, text me at that number, or you can send me an email to investorgmr at yahoo.com. If you have any questions, concerns, things you'd like for me to go uh, maybe more in detail, um, I can do that. But um, I just want people to be able to take advantage of this current market that we're in. The market is shifting. I know everybody, you know, sees that prices, you know, are high, but there are a lot of people out there that are having some difficulty and are going to need some help um, with their particular property. Um, there are a lot of people who invest in the real estate notes that we talked about um, that are looking to take advantage of bigger and better opportunities. So they are selling uh, their real estate notes. So there are you know, opportunities there. And I think that we at least need to to look into it, you know, whether you pull the trigger or not, who knows, but at least look into the opportunity and uh, based on what it is your goals are and what you'd like to do and see if it's a good fit um, and, you know, and, and, and kind of go from there. But uh, I think now is a good time to diversify your portfolio. I think it's a good time to to look for real estate opportunities, whether it be on a commercial side, or on the residential side. Uh, and if you, you know, maybe don't have tons of money saved up, but you've got a nice little nest egg with this retirement account, you know, let's try to take control of it and take advantage of, of this market here and see if we can grow this thing, you know, faster and with more security, not just, you know, going into the stock market and if there's a dip and having to wait for <clears throat> the market to kind of go back up I mean, because I really think that the stock market is controlled by um, basically like the Magnificent Seven. Uh, if, if anything happens with those uh, seven stocks, who knows what's going to happen uh, with the stock market? So, um, you know, it's been going up, 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 up. You know, usually when that happens, it is due for some type of correction. And before it does, you know, maybe you want to diversify and take advantage of some of these upper top, uh, other opportunities. And maybe it's not you know, with the real estate notes or the private lending, but it could be with some of these other things, you know, business opportunities, uh, if you want to do cryptocurrency or anything like that, uh, or some of those other opportunities that we talked about, you have the ability to do that. And so if you need help <clears throat> uh, with that, we can get you over to the right professionals to talk to you about that and uh, get you in the right account. And then, you know, you take advantage of the opportunities that you want to take advantage of. So, um, you know, hopefully that made sense and I appreciate everybody's time. Um, and, you know, if you watch this on the replay, uh, please just uh, reach out to me if you have any other questions and uh, we'll get them answered for you and get you moving in the right direction. All right, everyone have a great one and we'll talk to you soon.